This is a very exciting find for me. Uh, this has been uh, long on my list and for reasons I won't go into right now, I have not been able to find it. I have obviously found it. We're in Bayport, ghost town of Bayport. Um, I don't even think it's still a post office address. I think everything's been folded into Wikiwachi. But um, at one time, in, in the um, soon after the Armed Occupation Act, um, and people started coming down here, this this was inhabited, uh, settled, I should say. Bayport was a major port pre-war and during the war. It was a major uh, uh, embarkation uh, and debarkation site for. Uh, all sorts of goods um, for this part of the state. Um, I mean, this would have been a central direct trade route. We're going to walk and talk at the same time. There's, um, try to keep this as short as I can. Um, a major trade route for Brooksville and the general area. Um, this is Bayport Cemetery. This is one of the most, if not the most, overgrown abandoned, obscure, almost forgot about cemetery I've ever actually found. I know a few others that uh, still elude me. I don't think they exist, but that might just be ego and hubris. Um, I've just never found them. I found this bad boy thanks to a lot of research and some help from some good people. Um, this is Bayport Cemetery. Odd story about this cemetery real quickly is um, years ago before pawn shops were supposed to keep records on who was selling them what uh, a, some miscreants stole a bunch of headstones from this site there's still bases out here I haven't found them I'm not going to keep looking for them um, stole a bunch of headstones sold to a local pawn shop a local historian found out about it or, or saw them and and uh, reported it long story short took it to court against the pawn shop owner who didn't apparently didn't want to just give them up pawn shop owner had to give them up they're now sitting on the outside of the May Stringer Museum the historic Hernando Historical Society Museum in downtown Brooksville they're outside I've done uh, videos and albums on them but I've never actually got to come out here I was misled a few times and um, anyway uh, I just I did get to come out here now um, so this is it I mean this is as you can see this is as overgrown as it gets I mean it literally does not get any more overgrown than this I don't know how I mean there was no clear path coming in here there was a few spots where you could see a path but basically uh, just kind of push through the bushes as it were um so that's exciting it's exciting to come up on i mean this isn't obviously indiana jones stuff but at the end of the day it's pretty exciting for somebody like me to come out here and find something like this um again if you want to see the other headstones there's there's records of some of the burials of course as with all these old pre-war cemeteries and even some of the post-war cemeteries that are, that are abandoned records were very shoddy very spotty and who knows who could be buried out here? There could be all kinds of people buried out here. There has been no archaeological digs as far as I know. Um, and there was an article done in 1951 on this site by some local newspaper. And that said that it was abandoned. It had long been abandoned, long overgrown, a haven for snakes, blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, this is a long, long, long time abandoned. The people that know about it seem to want to guard it. Uh, its secret of its location zealously except for one guy that I ran into who I, I think will just remain unnamed for now but he knows who, who knows who he is and I I very much appreciate his help um, his his guidance along with some exhaustive research that I'd done before uh, led me to be able to find this spot so um, that's it. This uh, again. There's there's more bases around here. I haven't found them. I know a couple of people who have found a couple of the the spots out here. But there's there's so much overgrowth here that it's it's practically uh, impossible. Nearly nearly impossible. Um, 
The reason given for these two stones to remain is that they were too heavy for the thieves to move. And if you look at the other stones at the May Stringer, you can see that, that it would have been dumb, but it would have been difficult to, to move. They, those would have been easier to move than this would have been. So um, again, I'm not sure why somebody would steal a headstone and I'm not sure why a pawn shop guy would buy it thinking it was worth something. And I'm further not sure why the pawn shop guy would refused to give them up once he realized they had been stolen from a cemetery. But anyway, that's the story. It's a kind of a unique, interesting story. So I won't say it's a Florida story because all, all states, all areas have their odd quirky things, but uh, this is very exciting. So I'm gonna shut this down and get out of here now. I'll head over to uh, do some more stuff today.